Today, we're going to dive into a common step that's missed by marathoners and ultra runners during base building. That's going to have a huge impact on your overall performance. I know there's a few of you out there, very few, those out there, fans of the replacements. I know because there's, there's very few of them, but those few are in the know. And if you're in the know, you know all about Paul Westerberg. One of the most underrated lyricists out there. Check him out. All right, back to what we're doing today. I am at Snow King. Snow King's the town downhill ski resort. You can kind of see what we got. We got a little bit of, wouldn't say freshly blown snow, but a little bit of residue of some of the snow they've tried to make so far. But it's it's cold, it's 25 degrees, so I'm gonna chat in here for a minute so I don't waste my battery. I usually, in the winter, carry around a little, I, th I think it's actually a quarterback's um, hand warmer type of waste pack that I stick my GoPro in to insulate it and keep it warm because in the colder temps, it really saps the battery. So I, I, don't, I don't know how much battery life I'm going to have out there because I forgot to bring the, the little waste pack. Anyways, um, I'm gonna, I've got a climb today. I'm going to run up Snow King and then up Farron's, which is a 3.5 mile climb. And within that 3.5 miles, we're going to climb 1,600 feet, which is about 450 feet gain per mile. So quite steep. And my focus is to make this as easy as possible. Like I mentioned, my purpose today is keep this as easy as possible and focus on my cadence. If I could have good cadence on 450 feet of climbing in a mile, I can have good cadence anywhere. And it's good efficiency training. So I have my heart rate chest strap on to get really, really good, accurate readings with my heart rate because I'm really focused on my heart rate today to keep it aerobic. And that's the trick today. Everything has to stay aerobic. I'm trying to keep it zone three, zone four, no higher. And again, keep in mind, my zones are different than most zones out there. Zone three is typically maybe what other people consider zone two. So very aerobic, very easy talking pace. Just climbed up that. I'm probably just a quarter of a mile in, so super steep, but just nice and patient watching heart rate and focusing on quick turnover. And since we're going nice and easy, uphill route. That is the uphill route for once there is snow on the mountain and you allow for um, uphill travel on skis or skinning up. This is one of the only mountains in the States that still allows uphill travel. So people will skin up, ski down and do laps. There's the Grand Teton way over there. And there's the quick view, not even a half a mile in. And there, right down there is the parking lot. So again, trying to give you a perspective of this grade. Super, super steep. And one good sign of efficiency is being able to run steep terrain under control, under your choice, rather than it just be one effort because you're not efficient. Okay, and that's what I'm training today. But we're gonna dive into that mistake most of you guys are making during base building. And just to give you an idea of my effort, again, I haven't gone over 
in the 140s yet. I haven't even reached 150 yet. 155 will be my zone three. So that's what I'm gonna kind of keep the ceiling at today. Again, perspective, I just ran a half a mile in almost 12 minutes. So that's, uh, what, 24 minute miles? But I'm running it, conversational pace. That's what true efficiency is, it happens through time. Since I'm still just kind of warming up, I want to stop bringing the heart rate down, which is a good thing to do within the first mile on a warm up like this that starts just so steep. And um, I like to warm up on the hill versus on the flats because it again, it forces me to be patient and not spike the heart rate and feeds into everything I'm training today. But this is also a good time to give you a little um, sense of the land here in Jackson Hole. Here's the hole, here's Jackson Hole. That's the north end of Jackson Hole. We've got the Teton Range here. This is the elk refuge that in the winter, thousands of elk will come down to feed. Town of Jackson. And if we follow all the way around and behind Snow King Mountain is my house and all the trails that you've seen me run recently. Okay, so that just gives you a lay of the land and uh, relative to where where I live and and just where Snow King is and everything so all right warm up over with now I'm just going to try to settle in mentally keeping my heart rate stable it's gonna actually the first part was actually the steepest now it's going to mellow out a little bit and just be a consistent grade with a little a little rollers at first and then here's Snow King's Ropes course built into the trees. Pretty amazing course. 1.3 miles in. Let's talk about the three pillars of base building. We have endurance, we have strength, and we have speed. Today we're going to talk about endurance and strength and how most runners are making a mistake. And I've got some bikers coming up behind me and I think a few runners. And the key to today is being patient. So I'm not gonna get sucked into them forcing me into doing what I don't need to do. So if they come up behind me, I'm just gonna let them go. I'm gonna pull over, let them go so I can do my own thing. Patience is the number one skill right now. However, I guarantee you I'm faster than the mountain bikers on a trail like this, even at an easy effort. All the mud is frozen still and just wonderful temperature and trail is just in prime shape. Last year, we had about a foot of snow on the ground already. I get this question all the time when people are asking about cadence and they know how the important cadence is but on a climb like this, a good cadence is like 80 strikes per minute or 160 if you're counting both feet. So you definitely have to dial back the cadence or expectation of cadence on a climb like this where in this regard, 80 is really good. So I'm at 78 right now. And then, as I get through base building and into the meat of the season, my cadence just starts to improve at the same level of effort. So 78, 80 becomes 81, 82 on a grade like this. Again, you're looking for that continual progression of improvement, but it starts here. And therefore, this is one of the mistakes, turn my watch off. This is one of the mistakes people make in early season climbing is that they a climb like this, they might always hike, which that's appropriate sometimes. But for a workout like this, where I'm training my running efficiency and training gears and training cadence, there's no way for me to improve my climbing cadence without running. Okay, and you can do that in other ways, opposite of a run like today, that all works together. But today's purpose is to focus on efficiency, 
keeping it as easy as possible while I'm running. And that's where you can get better at better cadence climbing. You can't do it hiking. Two different activities. Having said that, you've got to practice your hiking. You got to practice your power hiking. All that's purposeful, but again, not for the purpose of today. That's where the mistake is. Everybody just goes into a hike and they're missing the opportunity to for great development by running a hill like this and getting better through time. Normally, again, they're gonna go right into a hike because they're probably not going to be able to sustain an easy effort. So then you hike run, okay? Through time, you do less and less hiking and more and more running. That's the development. Earlier in fall, October, it was quite wet and it was quite muddy. So I haven't been able to do a lot of climbing. So I'm quite pleased with how I feel and how all my flat efficiency has helped with my climbing. It's another good way to think about this for you who don't have a lot of long climbs like this, but you're an ultra runner, trail runner, where trails make you slow, getting out for flat road runs, working on your efficiency does the same thing. So ultra runners, don't abandon your long road run, especially during base building. A mile to go. So where is the road marathoner making this same mistake? Even though they're not climbing mountains, they're making their long endurance run too hard with no focus on cadence, with no patience on cadence development. Most common mistake people make in endurance is making their endurance runs too hard. Therefore, they become a strength endurance run, which comes later. And not to take all the fun out of it, but long, easy group runs, when you're talking with people, you tend to lose focus a little bit. You tend to reach a little bit, lose cadence with lower cadence, and you might be pulled into doing a pace that's just a little bit harder for you, which then is strength endurance. You're gonna to plateau too soon, and there's no real true endurance and strength development that happens in base phase, which we're going to talk more about strength now. Summit push. All right, I made it to the saddle. My turnaround just came up right from here. And if I take this trail down through here and head into those trees, I can go right home to my front door. So let's talk strength. But we have to back up a minute to understand why strength is important. Let's talk about how we generate speed, how we get better as a runner. To generate more speed, to get faster, we have to mesh cadence, which we kind of talked about, and we have to mesh our force production. Our force into the ground dictates our distance per stride. With if you take your distance per stride and your cadence, that's a good balance of fostering more speed. So in base building, if we do not improve our force production, we're never ever gonna really truly be developing our potential and our ability to have more force. Therefore, longer stride length, faster speeds. So that's why strength in base building is so important to build better force production. Your ability to provide force into the ground to propel yourself forward with greater force to increase your stride length. That's why strength is so, so important. And where the mistake is made in base building with many runners, marathoners, ultra marathoners, is that they miss this base strength step that most of the strength they're doing is really actually strength endurance. One thing that comes later. 
So a strength endurance workout would be like doing my climb today at a threshold effort, a much harder effort. That's strength endurance. Or doing a tempo run, a 20 minute tempo run, that's strength endurance and stamina. Okay, and that's what most people continuously do throughout their base building phase. So they're only improving their strength endurance and they're never taking that step back to improve their strength, which ultimately helps them improve their potential across the board. So that's what we need to do in base building. We have endurance, which is easy. What we talked about now, the other pillar is strength. And what is a strength workout? A strength workout is something that's up to maybe about give or take a minute in effort. Doing hill repeats, starting with 10, 15, 20 second hill repeats, because now they're short, they're steep, and you're forcing yourself to provide more force. And by keeping them short, you're able to provide a lot of force without a lot of fatigue. And that's the purpose is that we want to be able to keep them short enough where you're able to improve your force production through time, creating the development we're talking about. If that hill repeat becomes too long over a minute and get creep starts creeping into more strength endurance, the effort's slower because the length of the interval is longer. Therefore, we're not providing a lot of force and negating what we're talking about right now. So this is the mistake, the big mistake I see most runners make is they miss this part in base building of really truly understanding what strength is and why strength is important during base, base building. And for those of you who are just kind of sticking in zone two or doing the Moffatone method during your base building and that's all you're doing, you're just missing out on this development. And doing this type of workout doesn't have to take anything away from your zone two development. And it's only gonna really, really enhance it because now you're really, really improving what I call your potential, your force production. You're forced into the ground to get better, stronger, if speed's not your your thing, if you're not concerned with speed and performance from a speed standpoint, still meshing cadence and improving your force is going to help your health. Okay, it goes hand in hand. This is not just a, a performance and competitive um, method or focus. Okay, it goes into building a healthy, strong runner. So here's the divide, headed back down. Tetons, mountain bikers, what a glorious day. Thanks for coming along. As always, over and out from Jackson Hole and Born to Run World. See you guys next time. But I forgot to mention, now I'm on my descent, three and a half mile descent. Gonna take it easy. I'm only focusing on my good foot strike. Now, this good foot strike becomes eccentric strength training. Every step is a good step. Therefore, every step is firing my muscles in a proper way. The most important strength that everybody forgets about when we talk about maybe in the strength room, weight room type of strength is eccentric. Eccentric landing part of our running is so, so important. It helps our cadence. So early season, I'm only focused on running downhill nice and easy with good proper foot strike. Again, requires some patience. And it just gets faster and faster and faster at easy effort, but most importantly, I'm developing wonderful eccentric strength.